Before the mid-60s, Americans had never heard the term SUV, but the Ford Motor Company changed all that. In 1966, the new Bronco was an instant hit when it first rolled off the assembly line. Now, a group of craftsmen in this small shop is looking to rekindle that 50-year-old spark. They're bringing new life to an original Bronco and giving it modern-day technology underneath. Their mission, make an American legend even better. This is the headquarters for brand new muscle car. The team here has spent countless hours on a classic Bronco build, pouring over every detail from the body and suspension to the paint and interior, and of course, the 400 plus horsepower engine under the hood. And we have come to the moment of truth. The owner of this vehicle is flying in from Phoenix to see his Bronco for the first time. At long last, it's time to let this Bronco out of the stable. The fun part is going to be here. One of the things that people always identify with, and I know I really latch on to, are the small details. And a lot of it is emblems, chrome, trim, whether it's a 302 on a Camaro hood, or a Bronco emblem on a Fender, or Mustang emblems, whatever it is. It's one and a half. One and a half. It's those little details that, that say Z28 or Bronco or Mach 1 or Boss or whatever it is that really get me excited to see a 50-year-old car that feels, looks, smells new. To me, that's the best. I'll get out of your way. <laughs> see, you really don't want me going sideways. No, I don't. I've been there for about 15 years. We started working at a body shop together and he just rolled in and decided he wanted to paint cars. And uh, so he started working with us. And so just over the years, we've grown pretty close. Our kids know each other, you know, our wives hang out. I mean, we're friends. Dustin, what do we say about Dustin? Put your hand. Touch you. Ow! I'm just kidding. Oh. The one thing that I want to get across is that Dustin is my absolute best friend in the world. I mean, there's nothing I can't call him about. There's nothing I can't talk to him about. He was one of my best men in my wedding. We lean on each other's shoulder a lot, and I think that's what's grown our friendship throughout the years. We've owned the collision side first, and then we got into the brand new muscle car side later, and I think the collision side really started growing our friendship from just working together to, okay, now we're business partners. I like that a lot, walking down the side of it. Yep, looks better. It looks slick. That's right, because we did it. Yay, yay. When I was born, my parents had a hot rod. It was a 1969 Le Mans Blue Z28 Camaro, just like the one I'm sitting in right now. But this is one of my all-time favorite cars, and I can't believe we get to restore it. It's a numbers matching car, all original. Nothing's been changed. It even had the original paint job, one paint job. It was so clean and so nice, we didn't even have it media blasted. We just hand sanded it down and started a straight restoration. And it's an amazing car. We can't wait to see it when it's done. This is one of the original 69 Z28 302 car, which they only made very few. I'm not sure the numbers, but it's a, it's a really limited number car with that certain motor and tranny combination in it. I was pretty excited. I was kind of wanting to work on it, so I noticed it and checked it out when it came in. And, I'm a lover of the old muscle cars, so it doesn't really get any better than this car right here as, as far as that. In this case, we're trying to get it back to as close to original condition as we can. It kind of, the customer will dictate what he wants, and then this car was so nice and being rare, they're gonna try to get it back to more of an original shape than, than anything, you know, other than that. So, I mean, that's pretty much one good for your resume. It's, it's one that you like to work on. I've worked on a few, and they're, they're always just something new and, and not too many people get to work on them, so it's kind of a treat. I've been painting for quite a while, about 38 years, so I've worked on everything from boat tail speedsters, Ferraris, old muscle cars, just Harleys, choppers, just really anything you can think of over the years. You know, it's kind of weird, the, the funny stuff you get to paint and, and everything from toilet seats to bathroom fixtures. I've painted it all. And I've got some really good customers, which is really more important than anything. Like I said, if you've got a good customer that turns you loose, the chances are better that you're gonna, you know, have a, an award-winning project when you're done. 
Keep it right here because when we come back, the crew puts the finishing touches on this beautiful Bronco because the owner and his family are on the way to see it for the very first time. Brand new muscle car, Classic Bronco is brought to you by Clamp Tight, the clamp making tool. Silver Sport Transmission, overdrive transmission kits everyone loves, delivered with pride. And by Exalta Coating Systems, we paint winners. Welcome back to Tulsa in Northeast Oklahoma. It's a big city that feels like a small town and that means everyone here knows everyone else, especially in the automotive business. That works out perfectly for the crew at Brand New Muscle Car because when they need hand painting and pinstripes on any vehicle, they know just the guy. My name's uh, Greg Tudor and I go by the name of Little Toot and uh, Little Toot Auto Artworks. First thing I'm gonna do is figuring out my color. We're looking to match the color that's already been used on the wheels. I've spent a lot of years learning how colors mix and match, what additions can change it. Sometimes it's not always what you think. It's not just black or white. Sometimes you need to throw in a hint of purple or a hint of red. That's about as close as you can match a metallic with a solid color. And we want to come up with something that really complements the car. And being that it's on a black paint job, I think that's going to be exactly what we need right there. I'm going to start by using my mall stick. This is an old sign painter's tool. And all it is is an aluminum rod. It's got a rubber tip on the end of it. And what it does is allows me to anchor the rubber tip against the vehicle or the wall, whatever I'm working on. And it helps steady my hand without me laying my hand in the paint. I'm gonna be filling in the lettering on the front emblem and doing a little pinstriping and maybe a few other little details here and there. All of it is done by hand. In pinstriping, we use enamel-based paints. I also do airbrush work, which typically I'm using urethane-based paints for that. And everything is done by hand with a brush. Occasionally we use tape or other little crutches to kind of help us out a little bit. So let's try uh, doing a little pinstriping now. The brush I'm gonna use is made by Mac Brush Company and it's probably a little different than any brush you've ever seen before. It's called a King 13. It's really a variation on a brush that's been around for probably 100 years. Consistency is really everything when it comes to pinstriping. If it's too thick, then when you're dragging along, it'll kind of chatter and it won't flow very well. If it's too thin, then you have no brush control. There's no surface tension and the brush just kind of wants to slide around on you. Figuring out the consistency is really kind of an art form. I've been doing this for over 20, 25 years now, and you really just kind of have to learn as time goes on. It's not something that automatically comes to you. When I'm laying out the paint, I brush my brush back and forth across the palette and how it feels there is going to be representative of how it'll feel on the car. So that's where you kind of learn and you experiment when you're getting started. You try it a little thinner, a little thicker, and you learn where the sweet spot is. This classic Bronco build is almost complete. Just as in every other step up until now, the small details are so important, but none of this would even be possible if the project didn't start with a good foundation. One of the things that's fun about building a Bronco versus a Mustang or Camaro, which is what we're more known for, is when you're building a Bronco from scratch, Broncos have frames. A full, real, old school frame, right? So where are you gonna get that when you build a car from scratch? In our case, we get it from No Limit Engineering. No Limit Engineering builds custom, completely new frames. And they do it for everything. They do it for Mustangs, Camaros, old Chevy trucks, and Broncos now. And they do suspension, and they do all kinds of great stuff, and make these things drive like a brand new car. And that's kind of the point of what we do. We make vehicles that look like yesterday and drive like today, and No Limit Engineering, that's their specialty. Having a solid platform make, means a lot. It gives you a lot of feeling in the car. And we strive to provide the best platform so that the suspension can do its job. Do you feel confident when you're in the driver's seat that when you stab the gas and turn the steering wheel, it's gonna do what you want it to do? We spend a lot of time discussing with the customer what they want in their project. It's not my car, it's not anybody's car that's here. It's gonna be the customer's car. And we wanna guarantee them the best fit for their application. And our goal is to really to work for the customer to make sure that they're proud of the finished product and that they enjoy it. Well, this is a stock Bronco chassis. We think it's a 68 or 69. And we were pretty surprised 
how minimal it is. It's really not much to it. There's two frame rails and two welded cross members, one up in the front, one in the back, and that's all they had. There was a bolt-in cross member for the trans and transfer case mount and these little pods for the engine mount. And really, I guess for, you know, 1969 was 50 years ago, the 289 made 173 horsepower and they just kind of cruised around the beach or the farm and this was probably good enough. For what we're building and the quality of the cars and the performance that we're going to put in them, this is not going to do it. Not good enough, not strong enough, not capable enough, it's not going to ride good enough. None of the boxes are checked, so we got to start from scratch and do a better job. This is a finished base chassis, there's nothing on it right now. When they're completed, of course, it has all the front and rear suspension, the rear axle, rear brakes, gear set, all the front suspension, brakes, gear set, motor mounts, trans mount. Uh, we put all the fuel line plumbing in them, so we have all the lines for a fuel injection engine. All the brake lines are plumbed throughout. When these get down to David Miller's place, they'll be ready to set bodies on them, set motors, set trannies. It'd be a great fit, and it makes it real easy for those guys to build it on a tight timeline. Speaking of tight timelines, the owner of our Bronco is on his way. He'll finally get to see his reborn and rebuilt truck for the very first time. And one of the foremost Bronco historians in the world talks about the end of an automotive era. Learn more about the Ford Bronco story in Todd Zerker's new book. Get your copy of Ford Bronco, a history of Ford's legendary 4x4 at cartechbooks.com and at popular retailers in store and online. The first generation Bronco, amazingly, was produced for 12 model years, and then with the starting with the second generation truck in 1978, the Bronco became much more truck-like. It was based on the F-Series truck for the rest of its life. The creature comforts and drivability increased with each succeeding generation then through 1996 with greater technology, more refinement, and just things that made it more like what we think of as a modern sport utility today. The Bronco disappeared after 1996 for a variety of reasons, one of the main ones being that it only had two doors. The new smaller sport utilities that had come out in the late 80s and early 1990s had four doors, handled and drove better, and had much better fuel economy than the Bronco with only two doors and a large V8 engine. You have to go back and look at the Ford Explorer, which was introduced in 1991, immediately started selling in the hundreds of thousands of units per year. Compare that to the Bronco, which in the 90s was selling at 35, 40,000 units a year, and, and it just, the math didn't make sense. And people wanted easier access. You needed a four-door, and so that's why the Expedition came along in 1997. And the, you look at the sales numbers of the 1997 Expedition versus the 1996 Bronco, and at the time you said, this is a no-brainer as to why we're moving in this direction. I think there was a certain amount of sadness when we knew that the Bronco was going away because that had been such a storied nameplate for 30 years. We thought, well, maybe they could transfer the nameplate onto the four-door vehicle, but they didn't. They retired that. By the same token, we said, okay, unfortunately it's going away, but now it just makes us that more exclusive. The club just got all that more cooler because they're not making them anymore. So it's go time. Zero hour, customers on the way. Guys are finishing up the last few details. The Bronco's looking really sharp. Our detailing guy's name is Anthony. And the thing about Anthony is, not only is he easy to work with, he's very good at what he does, but he cares. I mean, it's all about the details, of course. The guy will treat your car like his car every time. You don't have to tell him, get all the nooks, get all the crannies, open all the, everything up, check everything twice. He's under it, he's in it, he's on it. The guy's amazing, especially on a 4x4 where we need the suspension done. Anthony's up under there polishing the shocks without being asked, and that's really, really nice. And the Bronco has to look really, really nice because the customer is here. How's it going? David, welcome. Josh. Oh, look at you, got the gang. Brought the whole gang. This awesome. is my wife, Candace. Hey, Hi, nice to you. meet you. My daughter, Taylee. Hey. My son, Garrett. Hey, nice to meet you. Addie. Hi. Hey. Lila. Hi. And Gemma. How are you? This is my brother, Jason. <laughs> hey, man. And his wife, hey. Cambry. Hey, wow, awesome. <laughs> you brought everybody. The owner of this Bronco is a gentleman from Arizona. He's a huge truck guy. He's got like a dozen trucks. Wife, kids, he's a big Bronco fan, and just couldn't resist the idea of doing a Bronco build 
start to finish. So you guys have waited six, seven months. You ready to see your new Bronco? Yeah! yeah. All right, are you ready? Okay, <laughs> let's go. Crazy story, really. Um, I, we just bought uh, the 66 U13 and just jumped on the U13 Facebook page. There was an article posted that they were looking for a U13 to possibly do a build. And so I just replied and said, hey, I just picked one up a couple weeks ago. Got a reply back that said, hey, let's give it a shot and see if we can make this work. This is the crew, if you want to meet the crew, the guys that built How's the car. I'm hoping I see just a custom Bronco that's easy to drive, that's, you know, has plenty of power, that's just beautiful. So I guess what I'm hoping to see just something that's just different, one of a kind, the best Bronco in the world. What's going on, Josh? <laughs> it's really special to be able to let them see what we built for them. And it gives us a sense of pride, all of us. And it doesn't matter who, who's worked on it or who's done it. It gives us all a sense of pride to be able to see their reaction whenever they see their car for the first time because that's when it's really real for them. Ready? Let's unveil it. Check it out. Oh, it is awesome. Holy cow. It's completely different than what I thought, to be honest with you. Way better. Wow, it's pretty. This doesn't look like whenever we picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> the best part that I like about doing a car is it leaving because whenever it leaves, that's whenever the customer gets it, and whenever the customer gets it, and they're happy about it, that's, that's my point. That's the, that's the part that I like. Oh, it is cool. We went a little nuts on the inside. <gasps> okay, Six other Dad, speakers. <laughs> it's loud, it's really, really loud. We'll crank it up here in a second. Yes. Yeah. When brand new muscle car returns, this 1966 Bronco hits the road bigger and badder and even better than when it rolled off the assembly line. Don't miss it. Brand new muscle car classic Bronco is brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day on auto parts and accessories. R3 Performance Products, setting a new standard for muscle car and resto mod builds around the world. And by Scoggin Dickey Parts Center, your source for custom built street to strip power. I uh, had a friend that had a Bronco and I had a K5 Blazer and we would take them out uh, near the Mississippi where I grew up see how far we could take them and uh, he was always always able to get out and I wasn't so uh, two years ago I had been watching a couple of Broncos that were at a dealership and went in there last year and bought both of them and restored the 72 or brought it back up to where it needed to be and sold it to a guy that had this one and he was a real tried and true Bronco enthusiast dad had owned one he redid this one, so I really can't take credit for it. It's pretty stock, has a crate engine that he put in it, a five-speed manual transmission. He redid the paint and body on it to his taste, which was exactly the same colors as the original. But he did add one thing, which was the uh, Bronco emblems that was from the older Broncos. The Bronco 2 is from a different generation. Just wasn't quite the same animal and it had a different crowd that was interested in it. A lot of people liked them because they drove more like a modern vehicle. You get great gas mileage compared to the old Broncos. They go down the highway 65, 70 mile an hour without any trouble. Original Broncos are definitely my favorites, but uh, you know, this has been great because I was able to drive it here, drive in comfort, and go up on some trails and just having a great time. All right, guys, you've checked it out. Josh, Jason, you guys ready to go for a ride? Oh, man, been dying for this moment. Ready to go, bro. All right, start her up. Let's roll. I had a Bronco in high school, so that was something fun for us. We took the top off, and we were always out there just messing around, and just love off-road, love being outdoors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can start in second. <laughs> How low is that? Wow. Wow. Yeah, Richard said it's it's a 410 in the back. Yeah. So yeah, it's a... Uh, nice low. Gear it's low, yeah. Like a cat has traction no matter what. Listen to it. Holy cow. <laughs> Oh, 
Harris Smith for you, buddy. Oh my, we need, we need two high man. <laughs> oh man, this is awesome. It's all roll cage, awesome, right? Yeah, yeah, I love it. Baja, it's actually called the Baja. Makes you just feel like you're outdoors and yeah, right? you can enjoy right. life. It's just cool. I love the looks people give you when you come by. Yep. You see it, something's different. Absolutely. It's a classic car. Yeah. Iconic. I cannot tell you how impressed I am with how well it drives. Like, I've driven lots of Broncos, right? right? And you're hanging on, it's like a roller coaster ride, and this is just like ready to go. Yeah. Straight line. Unreal. Yeah. Ride's nice. The horsepower is just amazing. I mean. Finally, this 4x4 Resto Mod is complete. And it's been shaken down on the road, but now it's time to see a Bronco in its natural habitat. Don't miss the finale of Brand New Muscle Car Classic Bronco.